Howdy Pilgrims, Pappy Stew here. Hope this finds you all well. You know, a friend of mine has been putting up some videos of boats, and he's thinking about buying a boat. And um, for those of you who don't know me, I was in the Navy for uh, close to 10 years, and I've operated small craft in freshwater and primarily saltwater for over three decades now. Uh, mostly in the North Pacific, along the Oregon, Washington, British Columbia, and Alaska coasts. And during that time, I have purchased, shopped for, and bought, rather, uh, five vessels. Now, I watch the boat market all the time, and it has been a buyer's market for several decades. Um, I just thought it'd be nice to make a vlog where I talked about what you should consider when you buy a boat. Uh, and I guess the best way to start that conversation would be to tell those of you who are thinking about purchasing a boat that the very first thing that you should consider is money. And that wouldn't be my primary choice of beginning for myself because of my interests and my past, but uh, when it comes to folks buying their first boat, I think it's real important that you should all know that if you worry about how much money you spend on boats or if you're plagued by how much you're going to spend and costs you're going to incur in just maintaining and operating a vessel and you think that will bug you, then I would advise you don't get a boat <laughs> because boats are uh, expensive highly intensive uh, maintenance issue and there's a lot of considerations and cost. Now the initial purchase of a boat costs are you know a consideration but the actual operation and maintenance of the boat and the costs incurred in that will in the long run be the ones that might you know scare some folks away. A lot of people think that if they go buy a brand new boat that all I'll have to do is put gasoline in it and pay for some insurance and that's all it'll cost them but uh, I'm here to tell you that's not the way it works even with quality well maintained used boats new boats will cost you rule of thumb somewhere in the range of about 10 percent of the, vo the boats value a year to maintain properly and if you're not going to maintain a boat properly, then you don't have any business buying a boat either because you're going to end up float Sam, jet Sam, or somebody trying to uh, pull you out of the drink. So don't go there. When you're the skipper of a vessel, you're not only responsible for your own life and safety and health, but those of your crew and passengers as well. So that's unacceptable for you to cut corners on maintenance. The main reason for that is boats operate in the most hostile environment of any motorized craft, more than aircraft or vehicles. They're subjected to a lot of uh, mechanical high stress based on water conditions and vibration, and then you have a lot of corrosion issues, with, especially with salt water. And, uh, plant growth, that sort of thing, and you still get some of that in fresh water. So, uh, big picture, if money's going to be an issue for you, you probably should think of another hobby and don't buy yourself a boat. Okay, if you got past that and you still want to buy a boat, before you even start going out and looking and all, the very next thing you need to do is sit down and have a heart-to-heart -heart with yourself and your other family members about what it is that you expect from a boat or in other words what it is you want to do with a boat because there's a tremendous range of choices and uh, purchase um, type issues with or centered around specifically what it is you want to do if you want to just cruise you know, short range day trips or cruise long range. If you want to do water sports like skiing or uh, tubing, what have you, water sports. If you want to be just a day tripper, small family application, 
with a mix of things if you want to be a dedicated hardcore fisherman or if you want a liveaboard or a bigger vessel where you're going to cruise very long distances you need to figure out up front what it is you want to do with your boat and like firearms and a number of other things there it really is no single vessel that's appropriate for all applications some vessels can do a little of either or but there's just nothing out there that you can do all things with so the first thing you need to do after you get past the money is decide what it is you want to do with your boat okay so once you've done that and you've really got a good idea of what it is your expectations are those of your own and of other family members because if you're not they're not happy especially a spouse with your choices then I guarantee you you won't be happy they'll make sure of that so get that straight in your head then before you do any more shopping or anything else the next step is to sit down and make yourself a list and you need to based on what it is you're going to do with the boat you decide you think you want to do make a list of the features that you want in a boat from your highest priority to your lowest priority and this list should be rather detailed and I'll explain how you use that list in a little bit so you may start off with um, you want a certain size boat you want a certain length based on what it is you're doing then you are gonna have a decision about what how hull type you want whether you want displacement or planing hull whether you want uh, fiberglass wood uh, steel aluminum what type of hull you want um, and uh, what kind of power you want, whether you want inboard, inboard outboard, outboards, or sail, based on, well, it, once again, what it is you intend to do with your boat. Then you need to go on with your list with certain features like what type of uh, amenities you want in your what boat, what type of hotel services you want in your boat, you know, do you want kitchens, do you want uh, heads, do you want um, centered things centered around skiing, things centered around fishing, etc. And you need to put them in the order of what's the most important down to what's the least important. Um, you know, and the list can include things like uh, what type of um, electronics you're expecting to get in the boat, what type of entertainment systems you're going to get in the boat, um, and then mechanical systems like what type of anchoring system, davits, um, um, you know, how the boat's going to be fitted. So you make that list. Uh, like I said, you can go out and buy new and you can spec everything you want in a boat. But if you do that, you're not going to eliminate maintenance and you're going to incur a huge price on the front end. Boats do are still very expensive, uh, particularly from for larger vessels. Now the maintenance issue if you buy a dinghy that with oars or a canoe with oars is obviously going to be minimal but if you get any type of vessel that has multiple systems aboard for multiple functions then you're going to have maintenance especially in a saltwater environment or a high vibration high slamming high uh, mechanical stress environment. Okay so you've made your list you've got the choice of buying new and another drawback of buying new is when you buy new you could spec things like instruments that you want uh, hotel services you want accommodations you want uh, everything like that but you're still going to incur additional costs that you don't know about up front such as the taxes uh, and the safety equipment you need aboard the boat and the, those type of things, boat, the boat uh, handling stuff like uh, fenders and ropes and uh, personal uh, flotation devices, uh, uh, 
emergency signaling equipment, all the odds and ends and paraphernalia that go along with the boat. You're going to have to go into West Marine or wherever you have, and you're going to have to buy all that stuff. So that's going to be an additional cost. You're going to be buying it new. And everything that has the word Marine on it is expensive. Personally, I buy used boats. I've bought five used boats over the last 30 years, and I currently own two boats. Um, so, I personally prefer to take my list and shop. I use uh, BoatTrader.com and other types of websites like that that allow me to search over a large volume of boats and look for boats that fit my criteria and I try to find boats that meet at least 65 to 85 percent of my criteria in the price range and size with the features that I want. Uh, sometimes I've taken up to as long as two or more years to eventually settle on a vessel. Because it is a buyer's market, you can't afford to take your time. It's really important that you be patient and it's a buyer's market take your time keep looking you'll find what you want and then when you get it you're still gonna have to bake up that other 35 to 15 percent of features that you absolutely have to have that weren't there in the used boat now just because you find the boat that you think meets your, meets your needs, that doesn't necessarily mean it's time to jump on the old PayPal or plunk down the old credit card and just make the purchase out of the blue. You should ask the seller to see a recent marine survey which will go through and inspect the entire boat from the keel to the uh, antennae sticking up on the roof and it will give you a list of what the condition of all the features of the boat and the mechanical and amenities are and it will list any problems that are there. If there isn't a survey you need to do a few things you, you've got two choices. You can either pay someone to do a marine survey on the proposed purchase boat you've got or you could do an inspection yourself if you know what you're looking at and make an assessment yourself. You'll still probably need to do a few minor uh, things like have a mechanic do a compression check on the motor if it's a motor boat. Um, if you have a very knowledgeable friend who knows that particular class and style of boat and can do a survey for you and take a hard look it can give you an opinion. And then never accept one person or one source's information on your research of a purchase that you're considering with the internet nowadays you could go out and do searches and read information on the power plant propulsion system that the boat has on that particular brand make model of boat on that type of hull on that type of electronics every feature in the boat can be researched and made sure that what it is you're buying you know what to expect from it and that it meets what the seller is telling you its specifications are and its performance capabilities are. Once you've finished your location of the boat and your research on that boat, then you might make a purchase. But don't be in a hurry. Be patient. It's a buyer's market. Um, Another thing, when you find the boat that you want, don't be afraid if you get it for a reasonable price to do modifications to it. This boat behind my shoulder right here is my current uh, primary vessel. I have an 18 foot uh, C, uh, Texas made that's an old 1964 aluminum boat that I use in small waters around here and it's got a 60 horse Johnson on it and a 3 horse Merc and it's just a little um, fish, fish, aluminum fishing boat but then I have this 26 foot Almar and I'm repowering it right now from a 250 horsepower Yamaha two stroke and I'm upgrading to a 2006 Merc Verado 275 supercharged motor so and that's a four stroke so and then I had to replace it it's a good example to use of modifications because not only did I have to replace did I replace the motor I had to replace 
all the controls associated with the motor, the throttle block, the gauges, and even the steering system. I couldn't use the original Sea Star system that was in the boat. I had to buy Merck's system. So I had to do a whole lot of modifications. And uh, the repowering ended up costing me more than I anticipated because of some of the parts systems that I got into that I did not anticipate. But, uh, you know, that's a question of research, knowing what it is you're going to put in the boat ahead of time. Anyway, big picture, in review, first, before you buy a boat, make sure your expectations are realistic. Second, make sure it is you know what you want to do with the vessel in question and that everyone in your family is on board with that. Third, make yourself a list and make it as detailed as possible with your biggest priorities at the top and your lowest priorities at the bottom. And then lastly, don't forget to do as much research as possible on the vessels you identify and be patient. It's a buyer's market. You'll eventually find what you want in a price range you're willing to pay that meets your needs. And then make sure that you take a boater, if you're a complete novice, take a boater safety class. Learn how to go out wherever it is you're going and make sure that you boat safely. In the waters that I operate in the North Pacific, you don't get second chances. If you make a mistake, if you don't maintain your boat properly, they find your vessel floating. So, number one consideration once you're out there is know what you're doing, know how to operate your vessel safely, and take the proper precautions before you go out notifying people, telling people where you're going to be, making sure the boat's maintained, etc. I hope this video was helpful to those of you that are looking for a vessel or thinking about buying a boat. And if you do, in fact, end up on the water, I hope that it's an enjoyable experience and that uh, you come back safely every time. Pappy Stew said it, and I'm out and on the side.